Um, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Trevin Flickinger. I am a data analyst for a nonprofit uh, here in uh, Columbus, Ohio in the United States. Um, a lot of my work is programming within Shiny and I'm interested in this uh, book club to uh, to learn more about the uh, more advanced topics that we'll get into later on. Um, yeah, so uh, this week we're going over chapter two. Um, I think there was a, uh, a bug or something with the way the numbers were lined up. Um, I think a, a past cohort had this issue too. Um, but this is indeed chapter two, not chapter one. Uh, we're going to go over basic user interface or uh, UI. Um, so we're actually going to, this is just going to consist of um, two components, not three. Uh, one of the other cohorts got into another like advanced topic outside of the book. Um, but I think that's beyond the scope of what we're going to try to do today. Uh, so today we're just primarily going to focus on uh, what was in the book, uh, shiny inputs and shiny outputs, kind of how they uh, relate to each other and uh, how they relate to uh, the user interface or the UI. Uh, here are uh, so, some useful links, um, a link to the book and a link to the repo if you haven't already um, made a, cl a clone of it already. Um, you can either, if when it's your turn to present, you can either take the notes as is or you can uh, change it and contribute it to it however you want to. Um, and then the cheat sheet for Shiny. Okay, so recall that the simplest Shiny app has uh, two components, the UI or the user interface and the server. Um, these two uh, components can also be referred to the front end and the back end. Uh, you might read that uh, in this book and elsewhere, uh, the front end being uh, the U UI, and the back end being everything with the server. Um, so the UI or the, the user interface that contains um, our functions and code that help create what the user sees within the Shiny app. Uh, it creates the um, HTML, so you don't have to. Um, this is, you only need to code in R and using uh, the Shiny library. Um, so yeah, that that's the great part about Shiny. Uh, the UI part, creates all the HTML for you, so you don't have to. Um, one key concept, uh, maybe the most important part or one of the most important parts of this chapter is understanding uh, the naming convention. Um, the, uh, the input ID uh, naming convention so this is this is how you get give names to um, like text or date inputs. Um, any type of input needs to have this input ID, and they can only contain letters, numbers, and underscores. Uh, no special characters and that's because it might um, 
it could have the potential of messing with the HTML that gets rendered. Uh, so only those are allowed. Um, and another key concept is that it must be unique. So that way you can, the, the Shiny app knows what uh, the input ID is referencing. Um, feel free to, uh, you know, stop me if you have any questions or, um, if you have any commentary, um, or also feel free to put, um, anything in the chat. I'll, uh, try to pay attention to that as well. Okay. So what can we use as an input or, or what can what's available to us. Uh, the book does a great job of introducing us like what's possible with building a shiny app. Um, there, there's a lot in it, but it's not like totally comprehensive. Uh, it, it will tell us um, like some of the arguments or the book shows us like some of the arguments, but a lot, uh, a lot more can be learned by going into the uh, documentation as well. Um, so we have we have all kinds of uh, inputs that we can have. We can use text, uh, numeric variables, uh, working with dates. Um, We'll get into uh, limited choices as well as um, file uploads and action buttons. So these are just a few examples. Um, here's what that actually might look like. Um, so here we have a slider input and it has a unique input ID of min, no special characters or anything and a label, which is what the end user is going to see uh, when they interact with this Shiny app. So they'll see limit minimum on their screen, um, and that's what they interact with. And here are um, the argument values. Uh, so depending on what input you have, these argument values might change. Um, so Hadley suggests that, uh, these first two input ID and label are so important that they don't necessarily have to be, um, labeled. You don't necessarily have to, uh, put those labels, um, inside of your input, uh, but he does suggest that all the rest of the arguments um, go by name. So that just makes it maybe a little bit easier to read. Um, I guess if you're if you're starting out with Shiny, uh, it could be useful to um, put that input ID and label inside of the inputs. Um, it's really up to you, um, whatever your preference is. Um, I think, so this is what it looks like on uh, the code side of things. And this is also, I'm going to go back and forth between the notes and the book a little bit to show, um, to show what the, um, output actually looks like. So this this is actually just the code. So there was no output. Okay. So a couple um a couple of different inputs to uh, take a further look at. Uh, text input. 
um, here, uh, depending on what you want the user to do, will determine um, which text input you put in your Shiny app. Um, if it's like a simple one-liner or, or very short amount of text, you might want to uh, use text input. And here, again, we have all the uh, IDs first, as well as the um, labels following that. So the user will see what's your name. They can input text. Uh, if you want more than one line, um, text area input is uh, the call that you want to use. This allows for more like free form text. Uh, you can uh, type as many rows as you want. Um, this just limiting it to three. And then, uh, excuse me, you can also uh, use password inputs. Um, there is a slight difference between these. Um, let me go ahead and come back to the book. Uh, so this is what the user will see on their end. Uh, the difference for the password input is that it will be um, start out and blocked out. So if anyone behind you or anyone that might be looking at your screen won't be able to see your password, the only caveat being is you might want to be careful with how you um, how you use the password input because there could be security um, consequences of how you code it up. And so this note here suggests that um, Hadley doesn't recommend it unless you have some training in secure programming. And then uh, you can also, uh, we'll see in chapter eight um, how to take the text input and and use the validate function to uh, encourage or limit certain properties of the text. Um, so that'll be something to look forward to. Um, let me go back to the top of this slide. Uh, one of the more, one of the second most important concepts is that uh, every output in the UI is coupled with a render in the server. Um, yeah, this is this is a pretty important concept with uh, Shiny um, and reactive programming. Uh, this might it might take a while to like fu fully. Um, uh, for you like fully get this concept or, or, or maybe you'll get it on the first try, but um, yeah, this, this is another important one, how the UI re relates to the server and how the outputs relate to uh, renders. So um, excuse me, besides text, you can also um, use numeric inputs um depending on what uh depending on what you want to do with your app um it can be uh it can be like a click where you can um let me show this So you can have sort of a drop down menu where uh, all your options will be what you give it in your argument call. Um, so 
the user will see choices from zero to 100 um, for like a little drop down for numeric input. You can also use sliders. Um, here we have two different sliders, um, one with a range. And so it starts off with at either 50 or a range from 10 to 20. So depending on what um, what your app needs, uh, you can use either one or both. Um, you may only want to use the uh, sliders if you have a limited amount of numbers, like if if it's like zero to like one thousand or you know ten thousand, it's going to be pretty hard for the user to um, interact with, I guess. So just think about the choices you make uh, and how the user is going to interact with with it on their end. All right, some more uh, some more inputs. Uh, these dates are especially helpful, um, like if you're generating reports and the user needs like a custom, like date filter. Uh, so here we can either have like a single date where they can. Um, enter their input, like when they were born, or they can input a range of dates. So it can be anything like, uh, how long is your vacation uh, lasting? Or if it's a report generator, you can specify like the start and end date as well. So here we have a uh, year, month, date, or yeah, year, month, day as uh, the format, but you can also, um, you can also change the format as well. Um, let me go to R. And so if you are curious about, um, like what the arguments might mean, or you want to learn more about the function, you can uh, put it in the help window of our studio. And so if you wanted to change the format, you could, um, the default is uh, year, month, day. And you can even change, uh, like the language or um, uh, some of the other um, formatting values as well. Back here, okay. If you want to give the if you want to give the user a limited amount of uh, choices to choose from, um, the radio buttons is a good way to do that. Um, so, for example, um, given a list of animals and asking the user what's your favorite animal, uh, the radio buttons input is a good way to do that. Um, so here we generated a list above, uh, the UI. So, uh, yeah, make note of that and how, and how that works. Um, and 
you can also do the same with uh, select input. And here we have uh, the question, what's your favorite state? Um, this would apply mostly to uh, uh, US folks, um, but then the state name is built in. Uh, so then you can choose from any of this or, or the user can choose uh, any of these states. So what does that what does that look like? Yeah, so so that's the select input is a drop down and then the radio buttons would be like a single selection. Um, if you wanted the users to be able to select like uh, more than one option, you can have that choice as well. Um, uh, for select input, you can uh, use the argument uh, multiple equals true, where they can select more than one option. Another good option would be to use, uh, excuse me, the check checkbox group input or uh, checkbox input. So thinking about depending on what what you want your app to look like, um, you can either go with the multiple choice version or just the radio buttons. Oh, you can also um, you can also change uh, what type of choice um, the user gets. Like you, you can use other things besides text. Um, here, uh, the book had the um, the book's example used. Uh, icons to show um, angry face, smile, or like a sad face. And so that's how you could use other options besides text as well. Um, so file uploads, this and downloads will also be covered in more detail and further chapters um, because there's more uh, there's more involved on the server side um, that we'll we'll eventually get into. Um, but this is this is like the the start of what you would do for uh, file uploads if uh, if you want the user to like upload a zip file or CSV or whatever, um, this is kind of the outline for that. Um, and then sort of like the uh, text input, you can also validate what files are um, being uploaded onto the Shiny app. Um, you can limit it to like zip files or CSV. Um, and you can also check to make sure that if it's supposed to be a certain format that, you know, the right columns are getting inputted or, or, or whatever you expect should be inputted is actually being inputted. Uh, this, that's just a way of protecting yourself and protecting the app from any like malicious behavior or any, any people that would try to like hack into your app for whatever reason. So that's, that's kind of the basic um, outline of that, but 
again, we'll get into that a little further um, into our reading. Okay, the the uh, the last input uh, for the chapter is uh, action buttons. So this is this is the uh, this is the function, and we have our IDs, and then what the user sees. Um, So here we, this is what, this is what comes out on the UI end, uh, buttons that say, uh, click me, or you can even add icons to your buttons as well, um, or drink me. Um, I'll take a little pause there just to see if there's, um, any questions or or commentary or all right if uh yeah if there's no questions i can uh, move ahead to uh the second part of the chapter, um, outputs. Um, so we we went over inputs, and this is kind of the other end of that. Uh, so what can we output? Uh, we can output text. Uh, we can output tables. We can output plots and uh, downloads as well. <clears throat> Um, so again, uh, highlighting this to show that it's an important concept. Um, every output in the UI is is coupled with a render, and so this concept's going to you know appear again and again. Uh, so something to be uh, familiar with, and and we'll get more comfortable with it as we go on. Um, so we can render text. Um, there are two render text functions that behave uh, slightly differently. Um, render text and render print one uh, is just for uh, any text and the other is uh, built more for code. Um, so here we have an example with our UI and the server side. Um, the, the text is our ID. And that's that's what we've been our our input ID. And so that's what we've been kind of uh, we've been using in the first part of the chapter, um, that corresponds to this server side text right here. And that's called the output ID. So that's, that's why you need a unique um, input ID so that the Shiny app knows um, the Shiny app knows what to point to or is pointing to the correct thing. So yeah, after the dollar sign is the output ID. And so that's the same with code as well. So I have your input ID on the UI side, output ID on the server side. Um, and then depending on if you're just rendering text or um, printing out code, that will determine which function you use on the server side. So 
So <clears throat> so the server side is is doing all the it's doing all the back end work and then the the UI or front end is how it gets presented to the user. Uh, another um, another helpful uh, tool when building Shiny apps is being able to output tables as well. Um, similar to uh, the text, there's a couple of different options for table outputs um, displaying data frames in tables. Uh, we have table output for static tables. Uh, you would want this if you have like maybe a smaller table um, that doesn't take up a lot of space. Um, maybe it's for like coefficients of a model or or whatever, but that's kind of table output for static tables is limited because you can't interact with it at all. Um, for more dynamic tables, uh, that's when you would want to use something like data table output. Um, so that gets into more of an advanced table. You can start to um, filter things or um, like, for instance, use a slider to um, view more of the table and it can fit on one screen. Um, so, so yeah, table output for static, data table output for dynamic tables. Um, the Table outputs, those will be in your UI. The render tables, that's where you're gonna put that in the server. And then again, um, your inputs, input IDs will match with your output IDs in the server. Um, so here, um, we're taking the data table, uh, data frame MT cars, and we're just looking at the first few rows for the static table. Um, and for the dynamic one, um, uh, we're gonna be able to view it all, um, but here we have an option where the page length is uh, five. So you can you can change that depending on depending on what your uh, table looks like, what your data looks like. Um, and here here's what that looks like. Um, so the static one will show everything you give the the uh, render table. Um, so that's like 10 or 11 columns and uh, six rows. That's not very much. You probably wouldn't want to go uh, too much larger than that. But this is where it really gets into um, what makes Shiny so useful is uh, you can use interactive tables, uh, search for values. Um, you can sort as well. Uh, so it really starts to become more useful when you can interact with it. Um, I think, oh. Hadley also recommends uh, Re the React 
reactable package by Greg Lynn. Um, I'll go ahead and put this in the chat. But this, this is where um, this is where once you kind of master these uh, basic inputs and outputs, you can use other packages that other people have created to really um, make your uh, shiny apps go beyond just the basic stuff. So that's, you know, Reactable is great. There's, there's some other um, table packages, I believe, as well. Um, that you can uh, you can search for and, and try it out if you want to, but um, that this one was recommended by Hadley. Um, oh, I'm not sure if I'm not sure if I went over what this output looks like. So I can do that uh, right now, but yeah, so um, for the text, the uh, text output would be just any straight text. And then um, if you're outputting code or uh, console output, that's where you use uh, the render print. So that, that will print like uh, like your RStudio console. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think this might be the uh, the final slide. Um, so similarly to text and um, tables, we can output plots. Um, so we have plot output in our UI. We have render plot for the server side. Um, the, the plot output here, we can uh, we can change the size of the plot. Uh, here we set the width at 400 pixels. Um, what else can we do? Yeah, we can change. Uh, the width can also be a percentage as well. Uh, the default is 100%. Uh, we can change the height of the uh, image or plot output. Um, there's some other arguments as well, depending on how uh, customizable you want to make your plot. And then on the uh, server side, that's where the uh, the plot information actually gets created. Um, here we just have a plot um, plot one through five, and we set the resolution at ninety six. Um, so you can use base plotting. You can use uh, ggplot or plotly. Um, both like these will all work. Um, and then again, uh, we have uh, the input ID and the output ID both being the same. Uh, what does this look like? So this is just a like a basic base plot um, showing uh, showing what it would look like on the UI side.
um yeah and by default it will take up the full width of the window or container uh here we just set it to 400 pixels instead um so as kind of a mirror to uploads we can also um have downloads as well the the basic form of this is having a download button um for the user to interact with um and this will require new techniques that we'll learn in uh, in the server function so we'll come back to that in chapter nine um <clears throat> some other tools and materials uh some of these will really help uh elevate your um your user interface to go from the basic uh shiny uh user inputs and outputs to something some things more expressive or uh maybe the <clears throat> basic inputs and outputs can't do everything you want so you might need to um, check out some shiny extensions or or some additional uh shiny material so that's the user communities like <clears throat> excuse me really great about um going beyond and, and building tools that you can really create the shiny app like of your dreams um and a couple of book recommendations uh the outst outstanding user interfaces with shiny that that will definitely help you go beyond some of the basics um and then once you start to use those and interact with those you might even get into uh further concepts like starting to dive into um javascript or html uh so you can really take it um as far as as far as you want uh so so in summary um we have a variety of ways we can do inputs uh we have a variety of ways we can do uh some outputs as well um think about how the ui interacts with the server side um and uh and i think that is all um i do have one more note before uh I'll open it, open it up for any questions. Um, let's see, where was th this? Oh, um, yeah, for one more note for outputs. Um, this down here is um sort of the simplified version of uh of the code if you have say more than one line of uh code or text that you're working with uh you want to use curly brackets so you can break that up into multiple lines and um make it more readable um and i think the curly brackets are also there for not just readability but um i think there might be another purpose for them as well that i can't think of let's see okay the curly brackets are only required in render functions if need to run multiple lines of code okay 
And I guess one last note, um, you should do as little computation in your render functions as possible um, because that can really tie up uh, the amount of computation the, the app is doing, the amount of computation uh, like the browser is going through and different users might have different experiences based on um, their computer setup. So be mindful of uh, how much computation you put in your render functions. And I think now that, I think that is it. Um, if you if you'd like to go back and and review some of the other chapters um i went back and watched cohort 3's video um it might be helpful to get another perspective as well um but here are those videos for your uh perusing uh if you so please um other than that uh, does anyone have questions or or comments on chapter two? Uh, for my end, no. Um, let's see if um, Lucio or Lydia has any um, comment. Uh, not at the moment. Thank you, Trevin. Okay, Lydia just messaged. Uh, no questions. Great talk. Okay, that's him from Lucio. Trevin, it's quite an amazing time listening to you, and it was, it was amazing. I uh, just want to ask um, Lucio, Lydia, Trevin, who is willing to volunteer to take Chapter 3? Okay, let's see if there's any message. No, okay. So let's see. Um, who is taking? Who is willing to take Chapter 3? Oh, we could actually still um, put that down in the um, in the Google Doc created um, on the on the channel. So we could just um, volunteer to like take a chapter. I wouldn't be able to for the next three weeks or so. Okay, that's Lydia. How about you, Lucio? Finishing up my fall semester. Oh, beautiful. Or oh, maybe one of these days, Lydia, you give a present. You tell us about what you you do, what you study, just like Trevin did today. Okay, so um, if um, I will just check the, I'll check the sheet, Google sheet. If no one still volunteers to take chapter three, then I might have to take it. I'll check, keep checking the, the Google sheet till um, maybe next week, um, Sunday, Monday. If nobody's going to take it, then automatically I would have to. I can do four or five. Oh, beautiful, Trevin, beautiful. Um, that's amazing. So let's see um, whoever takes three in the long run. But nobody, if nobody does that, then I would take three then. Um, I want to thank you everyone for making it to this call and I look forward to the observe observe event part because I really want to learn from from I, I, just like I also go and read on my own too but I really look forward to a very wonderful discussion when we come to that session because the basics of, of the chapter one to three is still the basics so I think everybody's just um, enjoying this part because it's just the basic but the time when it gets to the part of observe and observe event that's when we're really digging deep into shiny itself and to be honest why I came for this book club was to is just to understand how observe observe event really works and how to create very um, elaborate shiny apps and I'm quite excited to find out that Trevin kind of has some experience on his builds. When you mentioned he, he's built some some apps in the past. So um, thank you so much, guys, for coming around for today's meeting. I think um, at this point, um, we just have to um, go do all the things for that we've planned for the day. Thank you so much, Trevin, for handling today's talk. It was quite an amazing session. Thank you. Yeah. This junction. Um, say goodbye to everyone. Have a wonderful um, rest of the evening. Bye, Lucio. Bye, Trevin. Bye, Lydia. Bye.